Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer, kicking off a 50-cent pick five at Oaklawn on Arkansas Derby Saturday with the older horses in the grade three Oaklawn Mile. It's a grade three, $400,000 is the purse. Approximate post time, 440 Central, 540 Eastern. Let's take a look at this field. And really the key to this race, Mike, is the brilliant Southern California invader, the number four, Cezanne. It's kind of a shame that they've had a whale of a time getting him to the races. He's five years old. He's only started six times. When he does make it to the track, more often than not, he gives a brilliant effort. Yeah, he's run some some pretty fast races and he has, you know, won uh, over this two-turn mile in the past day. So, you know, while you could look at him, I guess, and say he's probably better sprinting, um, that's really hasn't borne itself out on the track yet, yet because he's so lightly raced. I am really interested in your take on the Time Form U.S. pace projector for this year's Oaklawn Mile. I agree with Time Form U.S. I think this pace will be fast, but is Law Professor really going to be able to make the lead from post position 10? There are plenty of fast horses breaking to his inside, including Running Ray, including Market Analysis, including Cezanne, and including Roadster. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, I think this pace could be fast. Um, I also wouldn't be that surprised if it wasn't that fast because the the horses that you just mentioned, you know, drawn more towards the inside, they all, you know, do have speed. And if they wanted to be forward, they could be. But um, it's not like that's, you know, a defined running style for any of those horses, Dan. Runnin Ray has gone gate to wire in his last two races, albeit against much weaker competition. As a matter of fact, this will be the stakes debut for the six-year-old son of Street Sense. But let's watch his most recent effort. This is an allowance race at Oakland over this distance on February the 19th. And Runnin Ray did defeat two minor next out winners. Yeah, he's in good form. He's been in good form um, dating back to, to last summer for, for Joe Sharp. Um, ever since Joe claimed this horse, uh, it just feels like he's he's just been in really good form, Dan. I, you know, I don't know. I liked both of his starts at Saratoga last summer, even while he was running well in those races. I didn't think he was a stakes horse. Um, my opinion hasn't necessarily changed off of those last two wins, uh, but he's in good form right now. Momosa was a graded stakes winner going a two-turn mile last year. Now, that was over a sloppy track at Lone Star in the Steve Sexton Mile. Since then, he's run some okay races, but he hasn't gotten back to that race. I know you've been a fan of this horse. Do you believe there's a possibility he's racing himself back into shape in his third start of the form cycle? Yeah, I mean, sure, you could take that position on him, if only because he's 20 to 1 on the morning line, Dan. I mean, at that kind of a price... Um, I think you're just supposed to look for ways to, to want to like him in here. And he has um, some races on the go back that would give him a real chance to win here. Uh, personally, um, I don't necessarily like his recent form. I really didn't think he ran well at all last time when Necker Island beat him. And that's, you know, a little disappointing to me. But at a big price, I could certainly try to talk myself into him. Like the number one run and Ray, the three market analysis is in very good form at Oaklawn Park albeit against weaker competition. He's won two out of his last three races, including this effort on March the 13th, where he was able to stay up close to a moderate pace. He's already taken over the lead here, and he's going to surge clear with an 88 buyer speed figure. Blinkers were on for this race. He's a solid horse that's won a third of his starts. Uh, when he began his career with Todd Pletcher, there were hopes he would be a graded stake source. It's taken him a while to get here. Yeah, true enough. He's certainly improved a little bit since uh, Maker's taken over this year. Um, like Ronnie Ray, he's in good form right now. He hasn't really done anything in those last three starts, Dan, that makes me feel like he's going to beat this field. Um, but he does have good tactical speed. He'll be forward, but he doesn't need the lead. 
the four Saison, four for six lifetime. He's won at a mile, as Mike mentioned, and he did so with a long stretch at Los Alamitos. The mile with the short stretch at Oakland should play very well for this stretch out sprinter. And we're going to watch his most recent start, the grade to San Carlo, won seven eighths of a mile. And as the odds on favorite, he was able to stay right up close to the pace. He was the best horse going in, and he proved it the last eighth of a mile. 97 buyer speed figure. He has run a couple of triple digits, although that 106 buyer three starts back, he got a very good trip. Yeah, very fast pace in front of him that day. And he took advantage a little bit, but he ran well that day. Um, I don't know. He ran fine in this race, Dan, as you said. It's a race he was supposed to win. Um, he did win. It didn't come back necessarily that fast. I, I wasn't blown away by the performance. You could see in the stretch there. I mean, once he took over, there was really nobody running behind him in that race. I don't know. He can win this race. If he's going to be, you know, some kind of short price, I'd rather bet somebody else. He's trained by Bob Baffert, and an ex-Baffert trainee is up next, the number five roadster who won the 2019 Santa Anita Derby and has gone hungry since. I think you and I have kind of gotten cold on roadster over the years. His last race was the Polynesian at Laurel, certainly a step down from races like the Santa Anita Derby and the Kentucky Derby. But he ran into a very hot horse. Cordmaker, the runner-up that day, has come back to win three stakes races in a row, including the grade three general, George. And Roaster was very aggressively handled that day. Yeah, they tried to use the speed in that spot, which isn't, you know, that out of that, that out of the ordinary for him. They've done that in the past. Um, they don't have to ride him that way. I don't know, Dan. That race was off of a layoff. Um, he got beat there, and he missed a lot more time after that. And now he's back from another layoff. I know that he has races that you could sort of talk about that would make him really tough in here. Um, I would want way more than the five to one morning line if I was going to try to make a case for him. I tend to agree. I think we're still concerned as to what kind of horse from a distance perspective is he? I know he won the Santa Anita Derby going a mile and an eighth, but he's also run some very fine races going seven eighths. And there are times where I think maybe that's where he'll fit best. Then you look into the fact that he missed over a year. He only ran three times in 2021, and now he's coming off a layoff. Good news is he has an excellent horseman in his corner in Michael Stidham. Silver Prospector is another horse, Mike, that you and I have liked. And he ran really well last time out in the mine shaft. He got a great ride from Joel Rosario. They backed down the pace. He just got beat by a better horse. Yeah, a really hot horse in Olympiad. It just seems like he can do no wrong right now. This horse ran well in that spot. I love the ride that they gave him there, Dan. Just put him on the lead um, and see what happens. Um, he just wasn't quite good enough that day, but he ran fine. He's very consistent. He can get any kind of a trip in a race. Um, I suspect he'll show up and run again in here. I'll use him. I didn't make him my top pick. Of course, Olympiad came back to win the New Orleans Classic last week, a grade two at the fairgrounds with a 103 buyer. Dark Vader is a horse, a little bit of back class, and if this pace is fast, perhaps he could take advantage. He's also making his third start off of a lengthy layoff, and he seems to be improving. Now, Peter Erton, a very sharp horseman, dangled him for the 80,000 last time out. There were no takers. Let's watch that race going seven-eighths of a mile. It was a short field at Santa Anita. Didn't seem like there was a ton of pace on, and Dark Vader had to get belly low to get up at the wire. Yeah, he's just going to get it done. This is, you know, second start off of a very long layoff, though. Um, so give him a little credit just for getting the job done here. Um, as you mentioned, he's got some, you know, pretty good races in his past as a younger horse. You know, we'll see if he can just wind, uh, wind up getting back to that level, Dan. If he can get back to that level, he can contend here. I think there are a lot of folks that are going to look at that time form U.S. pace projector. They're going to see that red bar and they're going to say, give me a closer. And I think they're going to land on a horse like the number eight, Folsom. Now, Folsom has not raced since the Pennsylvania Derby. He was in against a very good field led by the likes of Hot Rod Charlie. But not only was Hot Rod Charlie at Midnight Bourbon in that race, but so was American Revolution, who came back to win the Cigar Mile with a 108 buyer. And so was Speaker's Corner, who came back to win his next start with a 109 buyer. So that was a very live race. And Folsom is a lightly raced horse who might be reaching his peak now turning four. Yeah, I think all those things are true. I mean, he's he's easy enough to make a case for, Dan. Um, I, I don't really know where I stand on him. You know, they switched him to dirt finally early last year. He won his first three starts once they switched him over. And I actually thought he ran really well in the Matt win when he won that race with a 97. His races since then don't really do a lot for me. Um, I don't know. I know that he can win this race, but it's Cox off of a layoff. You know, these top connections with, you know, good figures showing. I just felt like he was going to be a little bit of an underlay in here. And I'm just not really sure how good he is. 
He did win at Oakland last year, going a mile and an eighth. They were thinking of running him in the New Orleans Classic. Brad said a mile and an eighth off the layoff. That might be a little far against the likes of uh, an Olympiad. Let's run him uh, going a mile at Oakland. Necker Island is up next. And this is a horse who's been really consistent for the majority of his career at various distances. And he just got a win in an optional claiming race at Oakland, going this distance on February the 21st. Let's watch this race right now. And Necker Island came from off the pace. You see him splitting horses as they turn into the stretch. All in all, this closer's trip worked out very, very nicely. He's going to run past the leader. I wonder, though, if this is his plateau, sort of a low 90s buyer horse, and he might have to do better against this tough field. Yeah, that's how I looked at him, too. He got a perfect trip winning that race um, and sort of did what he had to do. That was Mo Mosa, who was also in that spot, down on the rail in that replay. Dan, he just didn't have any finish at all. I don't know. This horse ran fine last time, but he, you know, everything sort of went his way in there, and he still only ran a 93. It feels like this this field's going to be too tough for him. Breaking from a tough outside post position is the number 10, Law Professor, shipping in from Southern California for trainer Michael McCarthy and John Velasquez. This horse raced in the tough grade one kill row on the turf last time out. He is a graded stakes winner in an off the turf race, but I think the race you want to consider is the one we'll show you now. The grade two San Pasquale, two starts back where he was in against one of the better handicap horses in the country, an express train. And you'll note Law Professor took a good run at express train on on the second turn, and then I think two things happened. Express Train asserted his class, and the mile and an eighth, I think, got to Law Professor. Yeah, I think both of those things are true. He wasn't he wasn't going to be at Express Train anyway, I don't think, but this horse got very tired in that last furlong there. It feels like the, the mile and eighth might have been a little bit beyond his scope there. I know the the win three back uh, was scheduled for turf, and the horse that he beat there beyond brilliant is, is more of a turf horse. I thought this horse ran really well in that spot, and when I look over his form, Dan, you know, I get that he's okay on turf. I, I don't know why they're trying to make him a turf horse. I think he's better on this surface. And he's getting Lasix, and he's getting Blinkers, and he has won with Lasix and Blinkers in the past, going a mile at Santanita. Express Train, of course, bounced back from that win in the San Pasquale. He took down the prestigious Big Cap at Santanita with a 104 buyer. Top pick time for the Oak Lawn Mile, kicking off a 50-cent pick five. We're both going with Law Professor. Mike, I think this horse has a lot of upside. I don't think he needs to be on the lead where Timeform US has him. And I just trust Johnny V to make the right call, breaking from the outside post. I think he's going to break running. But I think if he sees three, four other horses going forward, he's yeah. going to try to tuck in and save at least a little ground. Yeah, I feel the same way about him. I just I like the fact that he has that kind of speed, though, Dan, so that he can get forward from the outside post and then see what he needs to do there. I, I just like him better as a dirt horse. Um, against this field, I'm happy to take a shot with him at any, you know anything like that morning line price. Um, and I would just you know use him with a horse like Silver Prospector, who I just feel like is definitely going to show up and run his race here. He always seems to do so. He's in good form and is another horse with a versatile running style. 10 6 4 8 for Mike, 10 4 8 9 for me. We'll see what Cezanne does as he stretches back out to a mile in the Oaklawn Mile at Oaklawn on Arkansas Derby Saturday. Good luck.